for our action. action. Yeah, action. <laughs> Okay, so if you can please introduce your film for those who want to go see it. Okay, well, they can't. It's over. We just shot it. <laughs> I know, but after I'm, the festival. <clears throat> I'm Greg Jamback. I'm the director of Greg Taylor Ghost, and it's a 30 minute look into the life of a man who's been wrongfully incarcerated and his reflection on the. It, essentially the last interview was a week before it was released so we kind of bring him up to the cliff and hear what he's thought about his life in prison how did you find out about this story I do video production for a living and in North Carolina and I was producing a piece on a woman named Chris Muma who was Greg's attorney so after I'd done the piece on Chris she called me up and said oh could you come and talk to me. I've got this story that you might be interested in telling. And it was, that was in November. Greg was released in February of the next year. And we basically, once Chris had asked me, spent any time the phone rang, we went and you know, we were driving from Winston to Raleigh, which is an hour and a half to go do whatever interview or whatever event was happening. So we dove in. And did this trigger you to delve more into the, the justice system and, and the states and, and all the flaws that obviously relate to a story yes. such as this one? <laughs> this is a part of a longer story. Greg's whole story has an impact in a lot of different ways. You know, obviously him personally. There was a big issue with the blood evidence in his case where the State Bureau of Investigation basically lied about how they characterized the blood found. And then the process he was released through is one that could go to potentially every state in the union as a way for people who've been wrongfully convicted to find relief and get out of prison. Mm -hmm. Did you do a research or do you think there are high numbers of people who are wrongfully convicted in, in the U.S. or maybe also in other countries or world? I, I only semi know about the U.S., but you know, the United States have more of its citizens incarcerated than every other country. And the number that experts use is between four and five percent of those people are probably innocent. So if we have two million people in prison, I'm not going to do the math, but over a hundred thousand of them may be in prison innocent. And the way they get that number is by looking at the, basically the death penalty convictions that have, or the people who've been released through DNA. And so they can correlate that number of, if these people were found innocent because of DNA evidence, which was scientifically proving their innocence, they can extrapolate how many other people they think are innocent. And um, how was it for you uh, from an emotional level, the making of this movie? Did, did you have a, did you manage to interact with him at some point? Or you said you with his attorney mostly, right? But Well, we, we spent the, 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 we interviewed him three times in prison. And then during the week of his testimony, we were in the courtroom the whole week. And when those judges declared that he was innocent of the crime, it still is one of the most emotional things that's ever happened in my life. I mean, I, I've seen this footage thousands of times and it still makes my heart hurt to you know, have him be released. So it, yeah, there's a big emotional investment in the film. In, and then of course we've interacted with him since then. I've interviewed him three or four more times. We see him at different events around and we've had him come to events of ours. And, and so yeah, we're, we're still, we're not buddies, but we're there. <laughs> You've become close. Yeah. Do you think your film can become somehow an emblem of uh, all these people who have been wrongfully convicted and maybe create a movement of other storytelling through video, through other forms of... Our, our hope is that when we finish the longer piece, the free Greg Taylor documentary about his whole re release process, is that we'll be able to take that to film festivals and then to law schools and hopefully have impact on state legisla you know, legislation at the state level in every state because every state really needs a method to examine the way that they handle their wrongful convictions. And how meaningful is it for you to have uh, your film at the Socially Relevant Film Festival who tries to gather <laughs> stories such I'm, as yours? I'm so impressed that Nora has done 
this film festival just to deal with these issues because it's it's hard to go out. I mean, we've submitted to 25 film festivals and this is the first one in New York and it's the last one of this group that we're showing of this short. But to come to New York and be here and try to reach a larger, map, a larger audience has just been terrific. So. What, what was the film shown previously? The, we've shown it in North Carolina twice at two film festivals there. Once in Stamford, Maine, which was a very small film festival, but it was fun because it's where we're from originally. And at the Thin Line Film Festival in Denton, Texas, and then New York, New York. Yeah. <laughs> and next stop, Europe. Next, next stop, Europe. Yes. <laughs> Do you have any contacts for us? <laughs> See? Okay. Perhaps. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank, thank you so thank much. Thank you for very being. much.